Hello, this is Mr. Finlayson, and this is another video for uh, GCSE revision for the AQA Religious Studies exam. This video focuses on Christian practices and in particular worship. Now, it might be a bit of an odd video because this is essentially just me talking over one of the lessons that I did in our revision sessions. So to begin with, the definition of worship is that ultimately it is to praise, to honor, or to offer devotion to something in the Christian uh, instance, God and Jesus. It's liturgical means set structures and rituals. Non-liturgical is the opposite, no set structures or rituals. Informal means spontaneous or charismatic, and private is worship that is conducted within the home. Now, to break this down even further, this is liturgical worship, and in my lesson I used the clip from Mr. Bean, um, probably not wisely, to be honest. Uh, liturgical worship is performed by some Roman Catholics and some Anglican denominations. Liturgical worship is doing the same thing each week. And most of these services uh, are written down in a special book. So if you go to an Anglican church, they might say, you know, turn to page 43 and sing so uh, Psalm 227, like Mr. Bean's currently doing in that service. And if you've watched this Mr. Bean clip, you can't stand up and sit down at the right times. There you go. But moving on, let's have a look at something else. Non-liturgical worship. So this is a style of worship that changes every time Pentecostal Christians worship in this way. And Christians who worship in this way will often feel that the Holy Spirit is entering them during worship. They may speak in tongues and complete laying on of hands. And uh, I showed an example of informal non-liturgical worship, not in a quiet home, but here. This is the Hillsong Church um, over in Sydney, I believe, in Australia. And I did a See, Think, Wonder exercise with this. Um, and I do this with a lot of my classes and I don't tell them that it's actually a worship video first. It doesn't look like it's actually going to load. Oh, there it goes. Because if you don't say that it's a worship video first, and I'll just spin on, I mean, that doesn't necessarily look like our standard definition of what a church would look like. But this is a style of worship um, that is very popular, especially popular among young people. And you would obviously be able to figure out why. Um, Right, let's move on. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I showed these guys, my guys something a little different, as it says. And uh, this was a documentary called Around the World in 80 Faiths. Um, the vicar, Peter Owen Jones, went to the Bible Belt of the United States and you see a service conducted in a snake handling church. All right, uh, a very Pentecostal church. That is clearly a non-liturgical form of worship. Liturgical offers familiarity and tradition. You could go into any Anglican church around the world, even if you didn't speak the language, and kind of understand what was going on. The same for Roman Catholics. Non-liturgical worship changes with need. They do what they feel like at the time. And informal worship is uh, usually involves sharing and it can be quite emotive. Um, so it's a good idea to ask the question why Christians worship and here are some ideas uh, Christians worship to praise to thank God to ask for things to seek help answers or guidance and to bond with other Christians and then if we move on and we look at prayer in the second half of this video that is communicating with God uh, and we have the Lord's Prayer uh, hopefully I guess if you're born and raised in the UK and you went to primary school in the UK you probably know the Lord's Prayer in some shape way or form our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name etc um, remember that Jesus taught this prayer all right so the fact that the God the figurehead of the faith that we're exploring taught people how to pray this prayer contains everything he believed people need to uh, say in their prayers every day. So it's very important. If you can learn it, it's a really good idea. Um, so why do Christians pray? Well, to talk and to listen, to gain peace, to ask, to reflect, and to bond. All right, these are all decent answers as to why Christians pray. So hopefully that short video on worship and prayer can be of some help to you. Good luck with your exams. Thank you.